If you have invested in the fixtures and scan tools to perform ADAS calibrations, you know most systems will walk you through the entire process. But what happens when you follow the directions and the process still won't initialize, complete, or a malfunction light comes on? I'm Jason Stahl, and we're going to find out next in the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. When a calibration comes to a grinding halt, you might feel lost trying to figure out what went wrong. Troubleshooting the problem comes down to knowing the failure, vehicle, or fixtures. There are three types of failures. Number one, not being able to start the procedure or it never completes during a static or dynamic calibration. Number two, a comeback after the vehicle leaves. Number three, when the vehicle has a false activation of an ADAS warning or corrective action. Before you start any ADAS calibration, look to see what ADAS features are on the vehicle. In some cases, ADAS systems and features could be optional equipment. There is no sense in trying to calibrate a sensor that is not there. ADAS is a broad umbrella term for many safety systems on a vehicle. ADAS sensors detect the environment around the vehicle. The sensors could be cameras, radar, and now LIDAR. Automakers are improving the sensors and the number of them to add new features and improve accuracy. Then, there are the unseen sensors of ADAS, like the brake pedal position sensor and all ABS and stability control sensors. The logic behind most ADAS warnings or corrections is to examine the plausibility of the situation. For example, if the camera classifies an object as another vehicle, it will also use the radar sensor to confirm the vehicle's path. If only one sensor detects an object, it might just decide the camera has made a false identification and the plausibility that it is another vehicle is low. The other key alerts to know include the ADAS output during a dangerous situation. For some early systems, these alerts will give an audio or visual alert. Some newer systems will shake the driver's seat to alert the driver. More advanced systems can build up brake pressure and apply the brakes if a collision is imminent. Some systems will take further steps with the steering and even close the windows. Many ADAS features do not become active until the vehicle reaches a specific speed. Pre-collision systems might start working between 5 to 10 miles per hour, depending on the OEM. Lane departure might not start to work until above 25 miles per hour. The takeaway from this is that a test drive is required after calibration is performed. Simply pulling out of the bay and parking the vehicle in a spot will not allow the vehicle to activate or run a self-diagnosis routine. Knowing the speed range limits of these systems is critical if you try to perform a dynamic calibration on the road. In our next video, we're going to go over pre-calibration checks you should be conducting before starting a calibration procedure. I'm Jason Stahl from the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. Thanks for watching.